We spent a lot of time talking about half-duplex communications. Fortunately, in the modern network, we don't usually rely on half-duplex anymore, but we do need to understand the difference, especially as we look at wireless environments, we're gonna find that we're still using half-duplex communications. So what are some of the characteristics of half-duplex at this point? Well, first of all, we know that we can only have a single transmission at a time uh, in a half-duplex environment, and that's specifically relating to the medium that we are sharing. Furthermore, I can only transmit or receive at the same time. I can never do both at once. And lastly, we just mentioned this, that the bandwidth is shared, meaning that if I've got a thousand hosts all sharing a, let's say, 10 megabit per second ethernet through all these hubs, we've got a thousand hosts, we've just got so many <laughs> that are uh, connected into this network, but each one can only transmit when nobody else is talking, which means that we're actually dividing this bandwidth out among the thousand hosts. And so on average, each host is really only able to transmit at 10 kilobits per second, which is one one thousandth of 10 megabits per second. So this is kind of a big deal. But the problem is that until now, we have only ever been able to consider half duplex operation. The reason for this is because the medium has been shared. But we also just called out that well, now we've got network switches and we're no longer sharing a medium. And so that's thanks to two components here. First of all, I've got a switch and we now have separate collision domains. Let's call this collision domain one and collision domain two. And so that's good. I have split off the collision domain. So now when I have a host here, I only have to worry about the switch on the other side. Now, if I was running, let's say coaxial cable, or if I was just running a single pair of you know, copper cables to this switch, then we would continue to have to run half duplex. But the reality is that when I'm running an ethernet cable and that ethernet cable has within it four pairs, well then I no longer have to worry about sharing medium anymore because I can transmit on one pair and I can receive on the other pair. We spent quite a bit of time talking about this earlier on in the course and aligning, for example, a host to a switch such that we make sure that we're in alignment this way. So the transmission is sent on the same pair that I'm expecting to receive on and vice versa. So between the fact that we have a point to point connection and the fact that we are not sharing the medium, we can now move to a new type of communication that we can call full duplex. Full duplex flips the whole half duplex thing on its head. It makes it so that we have a brand new set of characteristics. First of all, we can have many transmitters at a time. Basically anyone can transmit whenever they want. And the reason is right here, we just saw it. If I want to transmit, then you'll be able to receive it. And if I start transmitting at the same time you start transmitting, we're using two different pairs. And as a result, I can receive your transmission while you're receiving my transmission. And our transmissions never overlap in any kind of destructive way. So we can both transmit at the same time. Second of all, and I just alluded to it, but I can actually transmit and receive at the same time as a given station. Remember before we said that I can only transmit or receive, but I can't do both at the same time. Whereas in full duplex, I can do both at the same time. So that's a big advantage to full duplex communication. Now lastly, because of the nature of all of this, what ends up happening here is that I get the bandwidth all to myself. The bandwidth is now dedicated because if I can communicate at, let's say, even the same bandwidth, let's just say it's 10 megabits per second. Now I can transmit whenever I want, even all the time, full time, I can just continuously transmit at 10 megabits per second. It doesn't impact anybody else's ability to transmit at 10 megabits per second. For example, this host can transmit at 10 megabits per second at the same time as my host can transmit at 10 megabits per second. And for that matter, the switch can transmit at 10 megabits per second in the opposite direction because of the rules of full duplex communication. So as we can see here, full duplex is a much improved way to perform communications 
when we have this con conversation or this situation where we have point-to-point -point connections and the fact that we're not sharing the medium anymore. So now life is grand and we can speak 10 megabits per second in both directions at all times, right? And unfortunately, that's not the case. 10 megabit per second, it doesn't actually allow for full duplex communications like this. Uh, let's dive into the details here. So when we're talking about our ethernet specs, the ethernet specification is created, once again, by the IEEE. They manage the ethernet standards. And we need to make sure that multiple vendors, such as Cisco, among others, let's just say uh, Cisco is vendor A, and then we've got a vendor B, that we need the ability for these two devices to communicate with each other when we connect them via an ethernet cable. And so we have this IEEE in place, they're going to create ethernet specs, and that means that everybody needs to follow the rules as much as possible in order to create this type of ecosystem. Well, some of the rules that the IEEE created don't allow us to do everything that we might want to do. For example, 10 megabit per second ethernet actually requires half duplex operation. Now, why in the world does it require half duplex operation? Well, we just said that we've got this wonderful scenario and full duplex should be on the table. Well, that's because at the time of 10 megabit per second ethernet, hubs were the primary uh, network device being used to grow our networks out. And so there really wasn't a scenario where I could be sure I'm connecting my 10, mega, uh, 10 megabit per second ethernet cable into a network switch in every single situation. I need to make sure that I'm supporting half duplex because I'm probably connecting into a half duplex type of network. And so that's unfortunate, but it just is what it is. So next we had 100 megabit per second ethernet and the good news is switches have started to come out. And so what we're gonna find though is that back in this era, we had hubs and switches in place and so we needed to work, be able to work with both. And so 100 megabit per second ethernet has both half and full duplex operation. And we need to make sure that we are matching our duplex with the device on the other side. We're gonna be talking about how confusing this can be coming up in this course because unfortunately, this can create some amount of confusion, especially when we think we're running, let's say full duplex, but we're actually running half duplex on a connection that can actually happen and it happens very frequently with 100 megabits per second which once again is known as fast ethernet so anytime we refer to fast ethernet we're talking about 100 megabits per second and we might see that that's running in half and full operation now next we have 1000 megabits per second so surely at this point we're at full duplex right unfortunately it is going to support half and full duplex per the spec now a very important nuance to this and a very important caveat is that Cisco looked at this and said, you know what, we follow the specs as much as we can, but we're not going to follow the specs. We are not going to support half duplex. We are going to support full duplex only. This is a Cisco decision. This is not something that's going to apply to every gigabit device that's out there. You might find gigabit devices that support half duplex operation, but it won't be a Cisco switch. If a Cisco switch is running in a thousand megabit per second mode, it is going to be running at full duplex. Now anything finally above 1000 megabits per second, I'll write this uh, over here. So anything over a uh, thousand megabits per second, so we're talking about two and a half gig, five gig, and 10 gig, all of these only operate at full duplex. So finally we got rid of half duplex operation, but it required us going to multi gig and 10 gig in order to do that. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click here to subscribe to CBT Nuggets and click the notification bell to make sure that you're aware of every time we post new content. If you're interested in a career in IT or you want to brush up on your IT skills, then swing over to our website and while you're there, be sure to sign up for a free trial.